Welcome back, everybody, to the Bellied Up podcast. Today, Charlie and I are at Matt's in the Minneapolis area. Home or, of. Yeah, or, or maybe you might know it as what, Charlie? Home of the Juicy Lucy. Home of the Juicy Lucy. What's actually kind of funny. the Jucky Lucky, if you can't read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about. Jucky Lucky. <laughs> Which, honestly, I like that name a little bit more. Juicy Lucy. That sounds like fun. the knockoff version, right? Yeah, you you try that Jucky Lucky or no? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you come on over for uh, for a barbecue and we'll maybe make some Jucky Luckies, eh? Yeah, let's do a Jucky Lucky, you know? Uh, what actually, Charlie, is yeah. there's, uh, no pun intended, there's yeah. a little bit of a beef going on with the juicy lucy what's going on with that well there's another uh bar or restaurant that's trying to claim the juicy lucy what is it the five eight really the five eight is doing a little bit of uh stolen valor on the juicy lucy is what i hear but this we go to the original well yeah we do but uh, what is their claim here I mean, I feel it's like the, that's a bold they, thing. They invented There's, the Juicy Lucy is what their claim is. No, I understand. But what's this other joint's claim? That, They're claiming they started it. But what is the? What is the, I guess, my bad. That was a bad question. <laughs> what? What is their proof? Oh, I don't what know. What are they pointing to as evidence? I don't know. How dare you come on this podcast and just give me like the tip of the iceberg? I want to know. I want to know the whole story now. What? Well, I mean, I'm in the I'm same boat as you. With you, you know, I know just you as much as it you up. do. No, you know more than me. You you found out the headline, but you didn't read the article. So you know what's happening right now, guys? Okay, I figured it out. Charlie did a personality test this morning, and he found <laughs> out that his personality type is the mediator. And it's And so now he's it's mad about it, so he's trying sucks. to pick a fight with me over absolutely nothing. I'm mad that my little cartoon of the mediator is this little fairy guy. <laughs> okay? It sucks. I look like a, 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 a little you know, guy who just likes to pick blueberries all day. And blueberries are good, mind you. But yeah, I'm going to stop being a little freaking mediator. I'm going to start being... <laughs> More, you know, I'm going to start expressing my feelings more. <laughs> That's like, I want to be the guy holding the sword yeah. in those little cartoons. You're the, you want to be the protagonist is what you're saying. Kind of. Um, this is a classic. Are you uh, a protagonist? What's your. You no, know? I'm actually a debater, which is very funny. That's <laughs> no, my personality that's type. Very accurate. Yeah. But it's funny because we have now switched roles. You were trying to pick a fight and I was trying to defuse a situation. So. Yeah. And maybe in a, a couple months, you'll have my little. You know, blueberry picker guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew what that was really about. Okay. Thanks for reading through it. Hey, I like those ducks on the wall. Oh, they got a little ring neck. Oh, yeah. Look at those. those are some nice ducks, man. And they, they got that um that kind of uh, coppery or that gold kind of looking tin, you know? Yeah. Um, very thin copper on the wings. I mean, those are some ducks that if they fall off the wall, they're broke. And you can't ever twist those wings back the way. I know that because my Nana had uh, a similar kind of wall decor and it would always fall off the wall and it never looked as good as it did yeah. the first time it fell off the wall. Some other things on the wall. What I like about Matt's bar here, Charlie, mm-hmm. is they got no ice, no plates because they blew the budget on the napkins. You know, they're honest here at yeah. Matt's. Yeah, they really are. Um, that is that is a that's a t shirt. That I mean that's that looks like a hat. It's a great that you way to make. save some money. You know, you're like, hey God, this ice machine's gonna cost this much money. We're like, no, let's just put a sign up saying make a little joke about it, it'll be part of the brand. Yeah, and there are no plates. I mean, that is accurate. Everyone's just got napkins on the table. Yeah. I guess some, I've never seen a spot like this. Some folks are lucky enough to have baskets. They got baskets for the fries, but that the them baskets are not um uh, suitable for the burgers. No, no. The, the burgers are all on the, the napkins. napkins. And I like that, though. I like that there's a hat just hanging on the wall. Um, the looks fedora? like a Cuban hat. Yeah, a hat that they, they're known to wear in Miami or Cuba. Yeah. Um, no, great vibes here in Mets. Yeah, and the walls are golden. 
which uh, which I do like that too. Yeah. It's a little. Um, I don't know that I want that in my house, but in <laughs> this uh, place here, I'm good with it. And then, of course, the classic wood paneling walls. I'm just trying to give a scene setting yeah, for the folks at home. You're doing a good job. You're really describing it in vivid detail. Yeah. Yeah, you are. I kind of want a Jucky Lucky. I'm going to be honest with you about that, too. A Jucky Lucky. We're going to have to get a Juicy Lucy as we head into this podcast. Okay. And for those who don't know what a Juicy Lucy is, I'm pretty sure it's that the cheese and something that's inside of the patty. Am I correct in saying that, Jared? Uh, why? It's, it's an encased uh beef patty why couldn't you let it be a surprise for me well why i mean i don't know okay sorry i guess i i guess i just figured you knew what a juicy lucy was a mediator would know but not me (laughs) okay um also miles i do have to bring up it's the longest day of the year today on june the 22nd i was one if (sighs) today is a long day it's about to get longer pal it's about to get longer. I know, especially with you arguing with me now all day that you found out that you're not an arguer. Freaking mediator. And also, I want to say that the longest day of the year that sometimes makes people um, excited. For me, it's kind of sad a little bit because days are only going to get shorter. They're only going to get shorter, you know. Um, so I'm going to appreciate this day and um, appreciate every minute of sunshine. Knowing that, uh, you know, the last minute of sunshine, I won't see that again for another year. Yeah. So, not to bring the conversation down, but hey, I'm excited to talk to some callers. Should we you? take some callers? Um, that would be great. Yeah, that would be a good good thing. See, I I can also be a mediator sometimes. I, not everything needs to be. You're all, now you're just overthinking it, Charles. <sighs> all right, let's. Get down to business. Hello, who do we got on the line? This is Todd. Miles, how are you? Doing good, John. I got Charlie here, too. It's Todd. It's Todd, Oh, I thought he said, hey, cut out a little bit. Just give me a break. Sorry about that, Todd. Todd, um, yeah, Miles, Todd. Is, Miles Hi, is upset. I um, no, I just didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I am. Uh, I was a mediator <laughs> in my Enneagram test, so I'm being more combative this uh, podcast episode. <laughs> All right, I've got it up. Well, I, I, I'm glad to hear it because I'm calling from Chicago. So. Oh, nice. Go oh, no. Oh, go Bears. Is that what you think? Okay. Listen. You guys may have a decent looking year this year, but you'll find a way to screw it up. I promise you that. Okay. Probably. Oh, dang. You know, if you're not upset about this and coming back at me hot with some heat, and then I just feel like a jerk. Okay. <laughs> Look at me smoothing things it's the over. It's season, buddy. I mean, you're you're going through your own stuff. I don't know when you guys are airing this, but I, obviously, I don't know what happened in number 12. <laughs> I am going through he my own stuff. He doesn't know when we're airing this. Oh, see what he did there? <laughs> no, I see what you did there. <laughs> Todd, what's on your mind, guy? Well, I'm outside here in the, uh, the great state of Illinois and uh, cleaning out the garage. And I got one of those, uh, Miles, you know all about it, garage refrigerators. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, just want to know what the boys think about uh, what beer you should keep in there. And let's not talk about uh, Bush, if possible. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but then, what do you want them to say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious. I mean, I, I think that would be the go-to answer. I'm curious what uh, if there's, you know, just maybe like a, a deeper conversation, yeah. of like sort of okay. like a, a light summary, something that you know kind of hits all the things. Maybe you know, people enjoy, but you like maybe have a couple different alternatives. So I mean, it certainly would, would have Bush in the crisper there. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So here's what I'll go for, and then you okay. can go okay. after that. All right. Okay, so sounds good. in my garage fridge, if I don't have Bush Light in there, and I got other stuff in there. All of the beers that are in there are stuff that people brought to my house at a party and left a couple stragglers. I woke up the next morning and you just throw it in the garage fridge and all of a sudden you got a collection of just one or two random beers from what you've collected over the years. And some of them are probably overdue and some of them probably aren't. But either way, they're not leaving your fridge because you never know. You might have a buddy come over that's like, hey, you got one of those double chocolate triple IPA. Oh, yeah. With the, sours, with, you know, with the honey nut aftertaste. Yeah. And you're like, well, actually, 
I had a, uh, you know, buddy with a screw loose that came over two years ago. He left it here. So, yeah, I got that coming right up, buddy. Screw loose and a man bun. Yeah. And uh, so you you basically got the hodgepodge. Yeah, going it's on it's like the junk drawer of fridges is the garage uh, fridge. I like, it's like to that. make your own six pack, but. Make your own six pack. Yeah. Adventure. Some exactly. of it. Do you have it? And you got expired beer in there, too. You well, are. I mean, that's just a little extra flavor, right? Yeah. That that just adds. It's kind of like seasoning the pan. And it's you know? not skunky, right? It's funky. Funky. What I like to say. <laughs> oh, that beer is a little funky. What about your overall fridge experience? You got like pickles in there. Do you have like some ketchup that's like spilled from like some food you got? Like you brought a burger home and it's got a little ketchup residue in there. Do you have some like old brats that are kind of that got that? Uh, like- I, well, I mean, everything in the, that freezer is freezer burnt. <laughs> it's been in there a while. Wait, fridge or freezer? Well, I got the fridge freezer combo. Oh, you know? nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and it's like there's a big block of ice that's built up in the freezer. You know, <laughs> yeah, you love where you can't even shut it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Breaks a seal. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think of that, Todd? Do you, do you have a few of those in your uh, garage fridge? Yeah, I've had that issue where, you know, you put a little, like, maybe some ice cream bars in there, and then maybe uh, you, you, you try to plug in a space heater as well and then forget about uh, when the power shuts off, and it turns into a little bit of, like, an ice cream oh. mess that re- <laughs> re-gels in the freezer. Yeah. Um, I keep a lot of those, uh, you know, jalapeno poppers and uh, uh, mott sticks in there with the air fryer. There you go. Yeah. It's like uh, anything. Well, pickles, pickles are key, though. Anything that you're not really going to cook, instead you're just going to reheat, goes in that freezer, right? 100%. Charlie, yeah. what do you got in your garage fridge? Uh, in my garage fridge, I got, um, I got, you know, we got Lineys. That's kind of my go-to <laughs> beer. That's what I got is the it, most what, is beer it, is of. Is it like the, the standard Lineys or the summertime? So what we talking here's about? what I really like. I like Lineys Light which is this beer that you can't get everywhere. You can honestly, I think, only get it over in, like, the um, Chippewa Falls area. Uh, maybe maybe you can get it all through Wisconsin. Can't find it often, though. So I like to have that. That's, like, the the uh, sweet treat for you. It is. It's really good light beer. And then beyond that, it's very similar to Miles. It's a hodgepodge of things that people have brought over. But then also there's a lot of leftovers that have kind of been forgotten. You know, like a leftover gets to this. It's got this shelf life of like maybe um, a week where you're going to actually eat that leftover. And then after that, it's just some you glaze over. It becomes part of the decor of the fridge. Yeah. It's like now that is just part of the fridge. Right. It's like, look, I got this new end table over here, but it's like, you know, half of a, a of a burger <laughs> um, from cops or something. Yeah. You know, it's a little hard and crispy. And I don't know why I wouldn't take the time to clean it out. I just haven't yet. What I, do you I, mean you don't know why? I mean, that says something about me, doesn't it? <laughs> I think you it's, know why. Well, because our personalities, Charlie, we don't clean stuff very often. <laughs> is that part of a mediator, too? I'm not a cleaner. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're just know. not the cleanliness. I kind of, I also think I kind of smell right now. Have you gotten a smell of me here? No, Mark? I think that just might be the juicy Lucy's. Oh, no, it's not smelling good. I think it's me. I don't get oh. too close. Don't stand. Don't stand so close to me. That's going to be tough. We're at the bar. Anyway, um, so that's kind of the inside of my um garage uh, fridge there, Todd. Todd, what would you say are the top three things you got to have in your garage fridge? Uh, well, I mean, certainly I think something that, uh, you know, anybody walks in, they can take it out and sip on it. So I'm yeah. going to go with, uh, again, I'm going to go with like maybe for us out here in the Chicagoland area, a Goose Island, uh, 312 ale and, uh, definitely some pickles. I, I heard that a couple of times. I think we always keep the gherkins around. Those are good. Just, you know, stick your finger in there and get a couple out. Yeah. I think it's important. Uh, you you said it yourself. You said they can just come in and grab whatever they want. I think number one rule of a garage fridge is everything is fair game to anyone. If you're putting beer in the garage fridge, you got to be okay with your buddy just walking in through the garage, grabbing a beer and coming into the house and sitting on the couch without even asking, you know, unspoken rules. Number two rule of the garage fridge. Todd, you touched on it just there. You must have pickles. I, I you got to have a pickle jar. 
and it's it doesn't what have about to the be Door County pickles. Oh, I'll 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 take the Door County pickles all day. But I my one of my favorite things to do is actually get a pickle and put it in a beer. You ever do that? We call that a beer and a spear, Charlie. Beer and a spear, Todd. You ever you get in the beer and a spear action? I can't say that I have. But what is, what is the uh, what is the right combination of beer to spear? And you know, <clears throat> that's dealer's choice, honestly. But just any sort of what I what I like to do is, like, yeah. you know, you take one spear of a pickle, yep. toss it in there, and then you do a little like uh, pickle bonus points, or just do a little, little just a little wrist action splash of pickle juice in the oh. beer. Oh, you know what I mean? So you pour I up like a beer, that. Throw a spear, in, and then you're like, whoops, and you accidentally just. Get a little, a little bit, a just little, a little bit of pickle little juice bit. in there. Just a little splash, and all of a sudden you got yourself a pickle beer. I like that a lot. Uh, pickle beers, by the way, are um, uh, pickle juice is very good for hangovers, and it'll keep you from cramping as well. Keeps you from cramping. Um, and I, I got that whole pickle in the beer from my grandpa Bob. He, I saw him do that a few times. He also salt his beer, but then his doctor said you can't salt it. I think that was his loophole because there was salt in the pickles. Um, but anyways, and then he had to use pepper cause things got real bad. Um, but he would, he would always have to put, decorate the beer somehow. So anyway, have yourself a pickle jar in there. What's another unwritten rule, Todd? Um, I don't know. I keep uh, popsicles in there. You know, the kind of, you, you, you clip off with a scissor in the freezer. Oh, yeah. the little uh, oh, freezies or I, I see, uh, uh, freeze pops. Freeze. Yeah. Freeze pops are, co- yeah. I mean, that's good call. Good. Co- that is a garage freezer you ever, uh, staple. You ever uh, slice the side of your mouth on one of those as a kid? Yeah. Felt like the Joker on, yeah. <laughs> on Batman by the end of the time you're eating it, but it was so good it didn't matter. Yeah. Blood. Is it blood or is it the fruit punch flavor? I don't know. It. <laughs> And those were like, if they were a certain kind of hardness, you would like break your teeth kind of yep. trying to get them open. Yep. Or you would um, just, you would just uh, hold it like a baseball bat. So then you can get it to melt a little bit. Yeah. But then we'll make your hand cold. So yeah. you put it, you, you kind of sit you on had it. Your but, shirt, you you hold it with your shirt. You already did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, those were you good. You got kids, Todd? <laughs> oh, you cut out. What was that? Oh. We're losing oh, them. Jeez, Todd, I, I think our connection is on life support right now. Let us know. Do you hear us, Todd? <laughs> Todd, are you in a tunnel? Tell us, are you in a tunnel? What, where are you? I am not in a tunnel. I am not in a tunnel. Can you hear me? You're coming back. You got a pulse. You got a pulse. Let us know. Do you have Oh, kids? my God. Oh, oh there, there you are. There you are. I do have two children. Two children ages five and three. Which oh, one sorry, do you like more? I'm not in a tunnel. You know, Todd, I was uh, I like both this time. nice. I was kind of hoping a little bit that you didn't have kids and you just were stocking your fridge with the ice pops, the freeze pops just for yourself. He has I mean, they've been in there not. prior to the children. OK, <laughs> I like that. I like that, Todd. But you're going to want to get through those, though. They're not just a decoration. Don't be afraid of those. They're, that's a good. I won't. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. or he probably just got the massive size one, so he's got, you know, hundred of them. Yeah, you, you go to you go to the store and the, you're like, oh my god, one thousand freeze pops, and I can save three bucks. Just in on that a big thousand? netted bag. Yeah, I can save three bucks on a thousand freeze pops. How can I pass up on those kinds of savings? What a deal, man. Like that. Well, well, Todd, I and, suppose it's about that time, fella. Oh, I suppose it is. Yeah. Uh, thank you both. Love your stuff. Uh, Charlie, I saw you how's that brought, which is a Bucks uh, bowl game a few weeks ago. Oh, nice did you? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it did. I, I housed it for sure. <laughs> I offered AJ uh, well, Dylan. It looked like they wanted to ask you a question. <laughs> they, they were trying to ask me. It looked me. like they wanted to ask you a question. And, uh, no, no, sir. Yeah, no, I was, I was busy chewing. I was busy chewing. That was a lot of fun. Too bad the Bucks didn't make it, um, you know, all the way to the championship this year. But we'll get them next year. And same with the Packers. And uh, I'm sorry you're a Bears fan, Todd. Yeah, well, say hello to your parents for me. Okay. Yep. Real good. We'll see you Love soon. You, Watch Todd. for dear pal. I should go. All right. <laughs> this is the long goodbye. All right. See you, Todd. Todd's a good, good guy. You know, he's a genuine I- fella. 
In the, and I don't mean this in a creepy or weird way. I'd like to go to that guy's garage. I'd like to go to I'd Todd's like to hang garage, out in too. His garage. Hanging out in the garage. I feel like not enough people are doing it these days. Yeah, it, I got myself a nice chair for the garage. I found it off the side of the road. But that's step one of getting a, uh, your garage game up and going is have a nice chair, one you want to sit in. You know? <laughs> yeah, I would recommend buying chairs that you want to sit in well <clears throat> miles <laughs> <clears throat> there are many chairs that people get just because they're free you know what guys this is good hey let's keep this wrong guys buy a bed you want to sleep in bed is different than a chair bed is different than a chair and also it's good advice yes but i've slept in a bed just because it was free for a lar large yeah. number of years of yeah my that life. makes sense charlie same with chairs it's like how much is it it's free you know it's on the side of the road you bring it in and you make it comfortable i like that i like that about you charlie yeah you're really a go-getter you're not some you're not some guy who mediates stuff you know thanks you're, you're pal. usually on one side so? or the other yeah i think i did it yeah cool oh, yeah it's the longest day of the year today and I tell you what, that means that you have more hours, you have more minutes, more seconds in today than the entire rest of the year to drink some tippy cow. Does that get you excited? It does get me excited. I'm going to enjoy this moment while it's here. I'm going to sip in the, the sunshine and the tippy cow. Hell yeah. And we brought our own tippy cow here today. It was kind of like a... Uh, one of those things you, you you carry around a briefcase and they're like, yeah. oh, my God, that guy's got a bunch of cash in there. Just, no, no, no. We got something better than cash in this briefcase. Yeah. You pop it open. We got bottles of tippy. It cow. just glows. Ah. It's a white glow for that Wisconsin white milk. Yes, you know? absolutely. So, yeah. guys, longest day of the year. Got to go to the store. Get yourself some tippy cow so you can tip it on back to the longest day of the year. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to today? Hey, this is Matthew. Matthew, how you doing? doing? All right, Charlie, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm sitting here with Miles. Why don't you belly on up to the bar with us and tell us what's on your mind? Hey, I'm good. So uh, I just got my private pilot certificate. Congratulations. And, uh, I'm trying to figure out what I can do with it. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, you're trying to so figure out what you can do with you, it? What do you... Yeah, what do you guys think are some good things in the Midwest I need to go fly around and see? Now, I got to ask you a question first. Did you happen to see our uh -huh. podcast where we had a private jet flight attendant on? I believe so, yeah. Was that uh, a few months ago? Is that what inspired you to become private jet licensed pilot? Uh, no, I started. Uh, I started training like a year ago. So I've been yeah, doing it for okay, a while. Yeah, it's okay, gonna take a. Yeah. It, it's gonna take a lot more oh, to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, how much of an? It's ego? no driver's license, model. It's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats you on your all that cockpit <clears throat> talk, and you wanted to uh, get in on that. That was just the icing on the cake. <laughs> so, um. How oh, much? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. First of all, congratulations. I know that that's a hard process to kind of go through and get the the private pilot's license. A lot of money, a lot of hours in the air. So, congrats to you. Um, so, you're looking. Can you like though? Are you in a financial situation where you can just like fly to one of these places yourself? Yeah. I mean, I just got to rent a plane, and then I can uh, hop much? in and go wherever I want, pretty much. How much does it cost to rent a plane? Uh, the ones I'm flying are anywhere between 150 and 200 dollars an hour. That's it. Well, if you think about it, though, if you're going to a well, place overnight, single engine. Yeah, these are single engine piston planes. I mean, this is no Boeing or Airbus. <laughs> so I, you know, I can cruise at like 100 miles an hour, and I got about four to five hours worth of gas. <laughs> okay, so you're wondering, well, where are you located at currently? Uh, so I'm in the uh, far west suburbs of Chicago. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're wondering, you got about a five hour flying radius going a hundred miles an hour. We'll give it. We'll give it within. Uh, we'll give it within four hundred miles of Chicago. Okay. Four hundred miles of Chicago. Well, so I, I got. I got pretty good, and I can stop for fuel too if I need to. So pretty much anywhere in the Midwest. Okay, anywhere in the Midwest, where where do you if you can if you got a private jet and you can fly yourself anywhere in the Midwest, where do you go? 
I'm going to go first off That's the bat. The I, first off the bat, this is my go-to, but it's a fantastic place, Wisconsin Dells. Um, it, you, you got, I love it. Baraboo Airport. Yeah, Baraboo Airport. Land there. Go gamble in Wisconsin Dells. Go down the, you know, get yourself a nice night at the Kalahari. Um, you know, so anyways, but I've talked about that before on this podcast, so we'll go right to Miles' first suggestion. Go I think the first place I'm going, if I'm flying around, is I'm going to Deadwood, South Dakota. You ever been to Deadwood, South Dakota? I have not. Would you recommend it? I would. It is uh, truly the wild, wild west. There's a street, the downtown Deadwood area. They got gambling. They got drinking. They got all the vices you would possibly need there. And uh, it's a pretty fun time. But it's it is would be a nice place to, to fly in, fly out, because a little like Vegas, you stay there longer than a couple of days. It starts to be like, this is getting a little weird. Yeah. What happened? Dead, little, dead, dead little weird is what it's called. Dead weird. <laughs> What'd you say now? They're just a little little stop and go. Don't need to be there too long. Yeah. I think that'd be a great place to go. Charlie, where else would you send them? I would go to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Uh, but before you go, I would ratchet strap your surfboard to the top of that airplane because uh, you can surf okay. in Sheboygan. It's one of the, you know, one of the little known facts about Sheboygan to folks not from Sheboygan is you can surf there. That's the Malibu of the Midwest. So just ratchet strap, um, like I said, your surfboard to the top of your plane. That should be a lot of fun. I don't think that would mess with the aerodynamics because there's a fin on the bottom of the surfboard. Miles, where would you go? I would, oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you're into like hiking and stuff like that, um, you could go to the north shore of Lake Superior, right? Oh yeah, Lake uh, Minnesota. That's like Superior. Okay, sure, yeah. and you go to the no- North Shore up there. Are you talking Duluth on the Minnesota side? Or are you talking the Wisconsin side? The, well, even further north of Duluth on the North Shore. Oh, you said um, North Shore. That yeah. makes sense. Yep, Duluth's more south. So you could fly into. I mean, you could probably fly into a small airport up there. Got to have one. Right? Oh, they got one. Then you can actually. They got a nice. Hike. Oh, they're, yeah, they're all over. Yeah, so you fly into the North Shore would be a great spot to go. Um, you know, uh, so that's where all my friends go now. Now that I got my license, they all want to go up to up to Minnesota. They want me to fly them up there. Yeah, there you go, a little puddle jumper. Uh, you could also head down if oh, you yeah. want a little more of a party scene in the summer. Head to Lake of the Ozarks, but it's also similar to Vegas and Deadwood. You only want to spend a few days there, and then you probably want to get out. Well, renting that sucker for a hundred fifty bucks an hour, he's probably he's probably only got time to really explore for an hour, don't you think? Oh yeah, just maybe fly or maybe just even fly over the Ozarks, <laughs> see all the lake. Yeah. That's nice. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, I think you could also go to the uh, Mackinac Island. You know, that's one. I've never been there myself. Is that in the UP? Yeah, it's up. That's the bridge from the UP. It's kind of like by it's UP. Yeah. But it's close to, you know, where the trolls live in the south. That's what they call them. The, the trolls under the bridge. Oh, you know. That Lower Michigan. Right. That doesn't sound very nice. It might not be nice. I may have upset <laughs> some Michiganders here, but that's okay because <laughs> we're the true mitten state. And also, the UP should really be part of Wisconsin. It's another conversation. Now I gotta ask time. you, where do you got something on your little bucket list to fly to in the Midwest? Not necessarily in the Midwest. I had Mackinac Island was on my on my airport bucket list. I got a whole bunch that are all over the country. Like I want to go fly out to Martha's Vineyard at some point. I want to fly out to uh, First Flight Airport at Kitty Hawk in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where the Wright brothers did the first flight there. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, other than Wisconsin Dells, that's pretty much all I got for the Midwest. Okay. All right. Also, Muskegon. You can fly into Muskegon, Michigan, right on the coast there. Sometimes there's an optical illusion where you can see the lights of Milwaukee from the shore of Muskegon at night because there's this refraction uh, thing going on with the clouds. I don't really understand, but you can literally see the lights of Milwaukee, which is 80 miles south across Lake Michigan. You can see that. You can also go see the Paulding light up in uh, the UP. Um, It's a, a ghost uh, of a train conductor who uh, lost his uh, life to a train at one point, but he still holds the lantern. 
Uh, you go out there with a six pack, and he shows up every now and again. The Paulding Light. You go to Mitchell, South Dakota, and go. see the uh, Corn Palace. Oh, oh, did you hear about the corn? What'd you say? Then you had me at six pack. That works for me. Yeah, and- six pack and ghosts. Sign me up. And oh, Miles yeah. has That's another great, great suggestion. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, got to go to Mitchell, South Dakota, see the Corn yeah. Palace. It's the world's only okay. corn palace. Yeah. You can also go to Hayward. Well, I cannot pass that up. No, you can't. You should never. And while we're at World's Things, World's Biggest Muskie in Hayward, Wisconsin, that's a big winner right there. I think there. the World's Biggest Loon Sculpture is in Vergas, Minnesota. Oh, you can go there. That's you cool. Got a, you got a whole laundry list. Honestly, what are you doing talking to us? You should be getting in the air. You should start flying. Get there. Yeah, there's a. Where you guys at? I'll come buzz the bar. <laughs> <laughs> We're at Matt's home of the juicy from a, Lucy. From a safe altitude, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just buzz the tower buzz for the us tower. a little bit. I like that. Well, I think you got a good list ahead of you, and uh, you know, I, I, by the way, there's a little bit of wind going. Are you flying a plane right now as you talk to us? Yeah, you got the top down no, in that no, plane. I'm, I'm outside. I'm. No, I was getting ready to go to work, so I'm standing out by my car. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's got the window down, you know, his arm out the side, yeah. just doing the little <laughs> flow hand thing like you do when it's nice out and 40 degrees in the spring. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have fun it. at work, man. Appreciate you calling in. Hopefully you can add a few things to your list now. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Let me know if you guys want to ride sometime. Yeah, yeah. Can well, you bring yeah. both of us? Yeah. What's the weight yeah, limit? We'll, we'll fit you both in there. Well, I don't. Okay. Uh, I, I know I how Leonard Skinner left pounds. this world. What? <laughs> Did I get about 900 pounds useful load? You can do with that as you like. How, how much do you weigh? I think I weigh about 130 pounds. 130? Yeah, oh. we're, we're good. We can make it work. Okay. I'll suck it in, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks for chit chatting. All right, thanks, guys. Tell your folks yeah. I said hi. All right, watch for deer now and reindeer in that he's, plane. He's, he's gone, Charlie. <laughs> I just want to let him know. Yeah. Um, I hate that. I hate being the guy in the room when people are like, all right, well, there's a weight capacity on this elevator, and then everyone tries to do the, oh, I'm going to look at Charlie and look at Jared so that when I do size up miles, it looks like I just didn't immediately just go, all right, what's, is he going to put us over the weight limit? Does that happen a lot? Well, you go into a lot of elevators, you the 12th guy in a lot of elevators. Yeah. Once in a while, you know, you, you open it up, it's already full and they're like, oh, come on in. And they don't see me back there. And then yeah. I start coming. They're like, oh, you know, um, there's another one. We'll send another one back up for you guys. It's old Miles. I'll take the next one. Mon pleasure. Yeah. Well, Miles, I do want to say you're looking uh, trimmer than a tack right now. Um, you've been, really been hitting the gym. Yeah, I've just been sucking it in the whole time. Have like you? I said, yeah. No. That should help. We, Miles and I wrestled for the front seat uh, yesterday. The old uh, shotgun battle. Shotgun battle. I haven't done one of those in a while. And it was like, um, you know, it was like the punt return. Yeah, it was, that's what I said. Yeah, I felt like yeah. I was uh, blocking on punt return again, where all you got to do is you don't have to uh, block them the entire way. You just got to stay hip to hip with them. Yeah. And then right at the right moment, you throw a block. You find your angle. Yeah. And that's what we did is we ran to our car in a parking ramp like a bunch of children. Hurt my shoulder. Yeah. Trying to how's edge them out. Yeah, I tried it? to edge them out. You know, the nice thing about being a, a, a bulkier guy, you know, because of all that muscle, is that when I'm trying to edge my way oh, in. to my headphones. It, when I'm, <laughs> I want you to listen harder. <laughs> when I, I edge my way in, uh, I had no chance. As soon as you uh, asserted your dominance, this mediator had to. Uh, uh, you know, I you, tried a you little. Did have you know? You, they say that the low man wins. You you were lower than me, but I just had too much body mass. I think I gotta hit the gym more. I gotta work on these legs. You, you gotta know? get more hip action. You didn't activate the hips. I heard you got good hips. I heard that from you. I was running around telling that story. You are oh, every okay. every uh, every day of uh, of this podcast. In yeah, recording I got some hips on me. Yeah, good for you. Should we take one more caller? Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Hey there, guys. This is Devin from Portland, Oregon. 
Devin from Oregon. Is How it you Oregon doing? or Oregon? I don't. It's Oregon. Well, I don't Oregon wanna... to you guys. It's Oregon. I won't say it Oregon. Okay, that was bad. Oh, you funny guy. <laughs> you got to buy, sell, and trade is what I have a feeling. I got to buy, sell, trade. I got a couple yes. buy, sell, trade. Really? Oh, did you see how Are I could really? Are you just having a garage Feel sale that? or what's going on? I'm, I'm having a car sale. Yeah, I got a couple vehiculars that I'm uh, willing to pawn off on somebody. Cool. Well, you know, you say it vehicular and uh, that's really going to uh, it's going to be tough to get someone in the door. Uh, but anyways, what do you got? Once once you see it, though, I just think a couple pictures. I got some mint condition 1977 Honda Accord lifted two inches with a big old bumper on it. Also got an 04 Ford Focus with a winch slightly lifted. Roof Wait, rack, the whole deal, you know. Okay, you have pictures of these? I just take a couple in the uh, DMs on, on the old Instagram. Okay, all right, we're pulling it up. So you describe to me this winch. Is it what I'm thinking it is? You no. Know, yeah, it's just a little, uh, you know, little little electric winch, man. It's uh, got me out of uh, some sticky situations in that car and pulled a mail carrier out of the dish when we had our last ice storm. Wow. With a Ford Focus. Yeah, with a Focus. Well, pretty, you know, I guess pretty I never... cool. Cool little rig, so. Yeah, you're quite the salesman. I like uh, oh, oh, oh. I like hey. how you're you're making it sound. It, it makes me want to maybe make an offer on this bad boy. And it has a nice custom steel bumper and a little skid plate made out of, don't tell anybody, road signs that I got legally. How do you get a <clears throat> road sign? Le- oh God! Look at this freaking thing! Oh, that is just- a nice machine right there. Oh, wait, can we show the camera? Can- oh, oh, you can just put it up on there. <sighs> what the hell did you do to so this why- thing? I, the, I guess the question is, Gambler Five Hundred. The question is, is why? Why is why did you do this? Why did you put a winch on that side? Right. I mean, I approve, by the way, but. Oh, here's the other one. Oh, my God. That, that is cool, so actually. cool. How much do you want? For, uh, first of all, this is not mint condition. <laughs> yeah. um, Looks like you spray painted it. Yeah, um, that's a nice oh, color. Yeah. That's a Honda Accord. Yeah, that, 77 Honda Accord with uh, yeah, some mini belt bumpers on it. Okay, is that stick shift? Is that a, a little five-speed deal? Oh, yeah. It's a little, it's a little five speed. Probably has all of forty eight horsepower. Nice. Okay. Well, you didn't answer my question. Weber, why? Weber carb on that family? Yeah. Why? Why did you put a winch yeah. on that <laughs> car? Well, so the Gambler Five Hundred is a little off road navigational challenge. You you basically make these ridiculous cars. You go out in the wilderness. You pick up a bunch of trash, and uh, you make it nice and clean, and have fun while you're doing it. Oh, that, so these are cra- uh, trash grabbers? Um, yeah, yeah. That's what the roof rack's on them for, yeah. So you're an environmentalist. Yeah, pretty much the Gambler 500 is all about just cleaning up the environment. And uh, Sons of Smokey is their nonprofit, you know, that uh, they just go out in the desert and pick up trash that people illegally dumped. Huh, that's pretty cool, pretty man. Interesting. So all what, these- what do you do for a living? I dabble. I dabble in this and that. I have all my little side gigs. But <laughs> He's, unemployed. <laughs> He's unemployed. He's <laughs> unemployed. Uh, fun employed. Two, two jobs. Two jobs. Yeah, fun employed and two jobs. And, uh, you know, a little dairy farm, too. So. Oh, man. No, this guy's a hustler. This guy's an entrepreneur. Yeah, at some point you go from being unemployed and a hustler to then eventually having your own business. You know, at one point I was also a hustler <laughs> just means that you're an entrepreneur who's making no money but you know what i have a feeling this what fun. are your side gigs he's got a dairy farm besides dairy he sounds like he's got two yeah, other got, ones yeah we, we we do the we do the dairy and we sell the eggs and we do some some goat milking and selling and uh then i kind of do uh do a little landscape gig as well and then i have my actual big boy full-time job what's the big boy full-time job 
It's, it's, a, it's a sit behind a desk and stare at monitors and schedule people to go assemble things at, at the stores like uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, the old fleet farm and stuff like that. I just okay. run logistics for them and build grills. You're there right now, aren't you? I am here right now <laughs> looking at my computers. Hot, nice. Hot, yeah, I like how you're. I like how you build that growth. Um, so now you've got these beautiful vehicles. They're um, they they seem to be passion projects. Why are Why are you getting rid of them? I want to get a different one. So I'll take a trade with somebody. I'm looking for that. That badass, like, you know, 70s, early 80s old beater that's rear wheel drive, five speed if possible. And uh, then I'm going to lift that and make my next one. Nice. That's great. Um, what's the craziest thing you've ever pulled out with that winch on that, uh, on that focus? It's probably the, uh, the mailman. He was stuck in a ditch and it yanked him out on an icy road. It was pretty fun. But other than that, just a lot of trash. People bring in boats to camp, you know, into the, into the gambler camp. They just punch a hole through the front of it and drag it into camp and you throw it in the dumpster. Okay, wait. Camp. So, so you're yeah, saying yeah, that you... There's a big gambler town, yeah. Okay, so what's the weirdest thing you've ever pulled out? Like, with tra- like what trash have you pulled out of the desert? So, yeah, a lot of a lot of boats, a lot of boats. So people are just dumping boats Jump in this of. desert, or what? All the all the time, all the time. Yeah, you know, we go over to Central Eastern Oregon, and people just dump their boats. <laughs> I've not. I, if, you go, if you go to like, if you just type in Gambler Five Hundred, you know, on the old Google there, you'll see all these crazy, ridiculous pictures and limousines that are lifted four feet in the air with you know, hammocks underneath them and stuff like that. So it's a good hobby. You guys should look into it. I mean, oh, I'm looking at it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. It's There's a the rally. Uh, the I Gambler recommend, 500. I recommend everyone listening to Google the Gambler 500. This is quite interesting. The Gambler 500 rally is a mostly off-road rally style navigational adventure using cheap, impractical, hence the focus, or fun vehicles to run through the country, picking up trash and removing abandoned vehicles and boats. Participants are encouraged to spend no more than $500 on their vehicle. However, this limit is not enforced. Man, this... Oh, someone did it with a PT Cruiser? Oh, yeah. This is cool, man. That's actually man. pretty cool. Now that I see it. Miles, we should really get... We should get a Gambler 500 vehicle. How someone much, did a boat. Someone oh, made someone a made vehicle a, out of a boat. That's, I like that. Oh, that's so cool. That's like a duck boat, dude. I bet you he can actually... Uh, I actually no. He he definitely cut uh, those wheel wells. That's yeah. that's not floating anymore. Um, this is really cool. So where does the Gambler Five Hundred begin? Or so the OG, the Gambler Gambler OG, is what we call it. That's uh, Central Oregon, usually held in June or July. It's July this year, and uh, you just kind of go to Gambler Town, and there's different waypoints. You can hit those waypoints if you want. You can do your own thing, or you can just. Go out in the wilderness, have fun, clean up trash. That's what most people do. But uh, it's all central, central Oregon. And do you guys have trailers? Like when you see that boat out there, you're not just dragging that boat. Like, do you, do you have a trailer and you're hooking it up to it? No, you drag it. You drag it? That's why the that's why he needs the winch. Yeah. I know, but I figured he'd just winch it onto a trailer. That you're gonna how far? So the this focus can drag a boat. I mean, you can drag anything with a winch. I, I know. I just feel like that there's <laughs> that there's too many things for it to get caught up on where you might get your own car stuck. But I suppose there's a bunch of others there. There's a bunch. Yeah, the the, the big one. There's uh, gosh, yeah, I think you know four thousand ish cars out there running around in the desert. Well, where are you dragging it to? How far are you dragging that boat with that winch? A lot of times you're just trying to get it to a place you can get a trailer to, but okay. know, these people go out there and they dump them in inconvenient spots. You just try to try to get them. Uh, there's there's actually a, a Sons of Smoky app where you can mark the location of some debris, and then you go out there. If you can't get something, you just mark it on the app, and 
you know, hopefully the next guy comes along and, and they can pick it up. That's cool. Uh, that's really cool. Well, I learned something new today, Charlie. I learned about the Gamblers 500. Yeah, me too. How much you want for these automobiles, by the way? You know, I like to I, I like to trade. Okay, so Gamblers you, all about trading. So got I, it. I want to trade for an older vehicle. You know, run and driving both of these cars. Run and drive. The, the Focus I, I daily quite a bit, and uh, just want to get something new and, and uh, you know get the next project. Wonderful. And if people uh, want to reach out, they like what they see here, how can they get in touch? Well, you know, you can just give me, no, I was going to say give me a call, but goodness gracious, you know. They can hit me up on the old uh, Instagram. And uh, the old Instagram is Devin, or no, D Watson. W-A-T-S-O-N, 7604. That's my Instagram handle. So D, if they want to uh, D, hit me up with a trade, let's rock D, and roll. D Watson 7604. You got it. There okay. it is. D Watson. Let's, he is D Watson. He is not E Watson. He's he D, D Watson. Watson. Follow him, D, folks, D. and uh, reach out if you're interested in one of those vehicles. You also, should, you got a photo on there? I bet people would like to even just see this sucker. On your Instagram, if they wanted to see I'll, what what I'll, it is, uh, I'll, I'll throw. Yeah, I, I I post on Instagram maybe once a year, so I'll throw uh, I'll throw some photos up there. Throw a couple people. photos you know, up they're, there. They're, they're they're beautiful. It would be fun to do something like that in the Midwest, you know. But um, there there might very well be something in the Midwest. You never you just gotta. There's small events that happen all through the country and in different uh, different countries throughout the year. That's cool, man. I All love right. it. Well, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate you. Absolutely, guys. Talk to you later. All right. See ya. Those those vehicles are, are sick. It would be fun to do one of those. Now, we're definitely, you and I, are going to need a handy person, more handy yeah. person to actually make it work. I can but do we s- could come up with some good ideas. We can come up with some good ideas. I can do some car stuff, not a lot. I did have this beautiful Volkswagen Rabbit back in the day. I still miss that thing. Diesel, five on the floor. Oh, man. They got these Volkswagen Rabbit pickup trucks that I really like, too. I think what I'd want to do is get a double-decker bus. That'd be cool. That'd be a very all, miles move. You throw all the trash on the first floor, and then you get to party on the second floor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know um, how you'd be able to lift that and get that into some like uh, tighter spaces, but I I feel like you'll figure it out. We could put out. some training wheels on the side. Oh, that's so a good idea. lift it up so it yeah. might be a little top heavy. Yeah. We then make some side cart wheels on it as well. Oh, uh-huh, that's good. That's yeah. a really good idea. See? Yeah, Charlie, we innovator. Do the gamblers. Yeah, well, we'll do the. I'll gamblers. drive, and you can pick up all the trash. How's that sound? <laughs> you know what, Miles? That sounds fun. It does. Wait, 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 wait. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. I'm gonna drive, and you pick up the trash. No. Yeah. We'll switch off every 500 miles. Okay. You start <laughs> picking with the, the trash. You I'll start it, it's the gambler 500, so it's 500 miles. Oh, so you do the second. Damn, that was funny. Yeah. That was All right. funny. Well, that was another episode of the Belly Up Podcast, Charlie. Yeah, feels good, Miles, to have one in the books with you We're today. We're going to have to get ourselves a Juicy Lucy in us here now. Uh, that, uh, I'm all about that Jucky Lucky. I can't wait. Hell yeah. So, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Belly Up Podcast. And as always, Charlie... Tip your bartender. See you next one. Bye-bye.